All right, folks, well, welcome back to a new episode of Chuck's of Brewing. And today I'm going to be doing something quite different in the brewing world in that I am going to be making a log beer. And so a couple of months ago, I went out to my wood pile for my, that I used to burn and I grabbed this piece of sugar maple. And over the past couple of months, I have been working on using this piece of sugar maple that I cleaned up after I got it out of the wood pile and I brought it in and washed it off and all that good stuff. And then I used the natural yeasts that are in this wood or that were found in the wood at the time to begin brewing beer with. And over the past couple of months, I've been working on cleaning it up, so to speak, in order to get the majority of the bacteria out of it to leave only the yeast to brew with. So I'm going to be using this is my yeast that I'm going to be pitching. And if you look if you look closely, you can actually tell, you can actually see in the contours here, there's yeasts that have clung to this from my past brewing sessions. In fact, line right across here is actually from where that little bit of wood was sticking above the beer line or water line as you might want to call it. And so it has a bit of the croison from the last brewing session. We're going to do a partial mash today, which means that I'm going to mash part of the, the grains. I'm also going to be using some dry malt extract to finish off to make our entire work. So let's get turned around. Let's see where we're going here. All right, folks, so we are going to mash in. And I'm going to mash this in cold. And if you've ever read Noonan's New Brewing Lager Beer, he talks about the benefits of doing so, meaning that this water is cold. There goes my, there goes our grain. We're just gonna mix it all in. I've got one gallon of water in here that I've treated with my brewing salts. And here in just a moment, I'm going to begin heating it. And we're gonna heat it up to 140 degrees. And I'm gonna keep it there for 30 minutes. I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. Let it kind of get hydrated. You'll notice I've got a uh, grain bag in here that I've got twisted up and tied to the side with a uh, paper clamp. Okay, folks, so it's been about 10 minutes. We're going to begin to heat up our mash here. I've also got this other pot over here. This has one gallon of water in it, and over here this other pot has two and a half gallons of water in it. And that's going to give us a total of three and a half gallons of water. And now then I'm going to, while I'm heating this to 140, I'm going to be heating that up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now our mash is sitting at about 68 degrees. And once we get this up to our 140 degrees, we're going to let it sit for a half an hour. Okay, so we've now come to our 30 minute point. And it's time to begin adding some more heat and taking this up to 152 de degrees where our alpha amylase can take over. Set my heat down a little bit. When it's too high, with just this little bit of grain in here, it's hard to control. So I've turned it down to a low, a medium low maybe. Okay, so I'm going to take this up to 152 degrees and we'll be back. Okay, so I'm coming up on 152 here now. Actually, I'm um, slightly above so I'm going to turn my heat off pull my spoon out put my lid back on and we're going to go for another half an hour here okay our 20 minutes or, or I should say our 30 minutes have come and gone so I'm going to give this a good stir and I'm going to take this bowl I want to drop or two of our wort here like so then I'm going to take and put a drop of iodine, just like that. Now, what you don't see, what we don't want to see is a, is a color change. And we are not getting a color change in that, in that work. And so what that means is our starches have fully converted to sugar. So that means that we are done with our mash. Take my spoon out. I've got my 170 degree water over here and we are going to move it over into, we're going to move our mash 
into the 170 degree water to kill off our enzymes that are working from the malt which is why we did this step mash was to work the enzymes to do the conversion from starch to sugar. Okay, so our water temperature is perfect over there. Bringing as much of this out as I can. So basically this transfer is going to accomplish two things. It's going to A, stop the enzyme from working and B, kind of do our sparge for us at the same time, which is to help wash the residual sugars out of the grains. Boom. We're in there. Let's leave that in there for about three or four minutes. Okay, so my four minute timer went off and now I want to drain our bag again. I want to get as much of that water or, or very weak wort out of it as I can because I'll every bit I lose in the grain is that much less than I can allow to boil off. Now some people will tell you that you're going to extract tannins but Brewlosophy has done some research and they find no difference whether or not you squeeze the grains and if you don't know who Brewlosophy is I'll leave a, leave a link to their web page down below. Okay, we'll call it for there. All right, now we want to move this And for my convenience purposes, I want to move this over to my other burner here. Make it a little easier for me to work with and allow you to see. Now then, what do I want to do? I need to add my malt extract in. give you a shot of my recipe there. I'll also leave you a link to my Facebook page where you can find it on there as well. So this is a total of three and a half gallons or thereabouts right now. now I'm going to begin to add some more heat to this and we're going to bring it up to a boil for a 60 minute boil. Get all this Pumps of dry malt extract. That was Pilsner, light Pilsner malt extract. And I'll just continue stirring until I come back up to a boil. Okay, so we are just coming to a boil. I'm gonna set my timer for 30 minutes. And this is the part you always gotta be careful. It's very easy to boil over right here at the beginning of this boil. Now some people will skim off this hot break. I don't worry about it too much. It'll all come out in the tube. Okay, so in 30 minutes, we'll be back. We're going to add our first hop addition, which will be a three quarters of an ounce of Magnum hops that are, um, I have to look it up, eight point, or I think, I forget what the alpha acid rating is. Look on my recipe, it's on there. Okay, so it is now time to add our Magnum hops in. This is another time you gotta be careful and watch for boil overs is when you add hops. Now I'm going to set my timer again for 15 minutes and that will be when I add my second edition of hops. Okay, so our 15 minutes came and went and so now it's time to add in a quarter ounce of Mount Hood hops. Looks like I got them all. And in five minutes I'm going to be adding a World Flock tablet and some yeast nu nutrients. So in goes our World, World Flock tablet. And I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of yeast nutrient, which is a heavy feed, but there we go. You see how that kind of foamed up sometimes and cause things to boil over on you when you put things in like that. Okay, so about 10 more minutes and we're done with the boil. 
Okay, so the boil is about to come to the end now, or come to an end now. And I, since I do not have an indoor chiller, or a chiller capable of being operated indoors, I am going to be taking this to a cold tub of water in the bathroom here in just a minute. So, as soon as our timer goes off here in just another two seconds, there we go, off with the heat. Back on with the lid, and I will be back in a few after I get this cooled down to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Our wort is cooled down to 110 degrees, and hopefully I'll end up somewhere around 98 by the time I dump it in and lost from the fermenter there. I did sanitize my strainer and that cheesecloth. I did the cheesecloth by running a hot electric iron over it. The goal is to help keep the hops out and also to help aerate the wort as it's going through. In goes my tilt hydrometer. Okay. So the hops are in. Now the next thing I need to do is take a gravity sample. Now and inside the jacket of the fermenter I have a heater, like a heating pad to try to keep this at 98 degrees to start with and then I will slowly reduce it over time as it goes through its fermentation. And I came out right at my three gallons is where I had this calculated for. Okay, so I will begin cooling my sample there. Now, for the coup de gras, in goes the log. And on comes the top. Okay folks, so how did I do today? I think I did pretty good actually. Going into my fermenter here, the temperature. I was shooting for 98 degrees. I ended up at 99 degrees. I think my collar turned out pretty close to exactly where I was shooting for. My OG, according to a regular glass hydrometer. I haven't even checked the tilt hydrometer yet, but my glass hydrometer came out about 10 points high, which puts it into an efficiency rating that shouldn't be possible on a step mat or on a uh, partial mash. So how did I do that? The only way I can figure that I got that, got a high efficiency was because my partial mash was more closely resembling a true mash with a two-step mash temperature rise. And so that's the only way I can figure that I missed my efficiency. So maybe it's counting it more as a, an actual full mash type of a, a process. And so I don't know. I'm going to have to play with my calculator in there a little bit and see where that goes. But at any rate... That doesn't bother me too much. I, w I had boosted my hops up a little bit. And so I think I'm going to be doing all right. Again, the color, I think, is turning out exactly where I was looking for. And I'm going to give it a try. Malty with some hops. That's going to be a good test for this log yeast. It's going to allow the yeast to kind of shine through exactly what I was shooting for. It's got some good grain flavor to it from that Munich malt, Munich 2. I think this is going to be a good beer. Provided my log does exactly what I think it's going to do based on past experience. Okay, so hopefully before the night's over, I'm going to see some activity coming out of the fermentation lock here. I'll give you a last update later tonight. We'll see where we're at. All right, folks, so there we go. It is now about 
eight hours or so since I pitched the log and we've already got fermentation taking place. Enough that we're occasionally blowing bubbles through here. Now that log. When I re determine that it's reached high croissant, it's probably be about 24 hours from now, I will be removing the log and I will kind of bathe it in some of the high croissant and get it re-inoculated with yeast again and then I'll begin letting it dry. So there we are. We've got a log bear going. All right, folks. Well, tonight is March 26th, 2020. And so as you can see, our beer has been fermenting now for 11 days. It was actually done. If you look at the, if you look at the uh, chart here, you'll see that it was actually done for the most part after about 48 hours. And certainly by three days, it was down to uh, near its final gravity. And so what we're in the process of doing here, we're getting ready to pressure transfer from our fermenter here down into this keg that's down below that you can't see yet, but I'll get it down there here in just a minute and I'll show you what's going on. In fact, let's get turned around. All right, folks, what we've got going on here, we've got a CO2 tank here that I am putting about three pounds of pressure onto my fermenter up through his, up through this uh, final tubing here, up to the fermenter. And then I've got my fermenter emptying into the outlet side of my keg. The outlet side has a dip tube that comes all the way down to the bottom. And then I've got this spunding valve here that is going to allow me to vent out pressure from the keg as I fill it. And I have attempted to as best possible to uh, fill the keg previously with CO2. Now, when you put CO2 in there, unless you pulled a vacuum on the keg, which I did not do, could it be done? It could be done. But unless you pull a vacuum on there, you're still gonna get some air in with your beer or into the keg. Without a vacuum pump, it's virtually impossible to remove all of the air. But by doing it with this method, we're gonna to try to reduce it as much as possible. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open this up and begin letting our beer flow. It shouldn't take too long. It's only um, right at three gallons of beer in here. See if you can see that, it is flowing pretty quickly. You can probably hear that venting. All right, folks, so if you look over here on the far right, you'll see where I removed the log from the beer at about a day and a half after I pitched it. And that was because I determined that it was at high croissant. And so I removed it. And when I did, I also kind of rolled it around into the uh, croissant there to re-inoculate the log. And um, I think I was successful with that. So where are we going from here? Okay, so I've taken and I've put this beer in the keg and I moved it into the keezer. So tomorrow I will be adding some gelatin to it to help clear it up, hopefully. And my past experience has been that it will not clear very well. This yeast does not seem to want to come out of suspension. That being said, I'm going to give it a shot anyhow. Also, from there, I will carbonate it. And once it's carbonated, we're going to see how it turns out. All right, folks, so let's go over kind of a review of what we did here. Okay, so I brewed this beer on March 15th and pitched the log into it at a 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I removed the log at high croissant, which was on March, late in, on March 16th. In fact, it was about 11 o'clock at night. And then we fermented the beer from 1.057 original gravity down to 1.008 final gravity. And that gives it a final alcohol by volume of 6.43% alcohol content. Now, and I transferred the beer from the fermenter to the keg on the 26th. So that was 11 days in the fermenter. Then I added finings into the keg on the 27th. Then I started drinking on the 31st. So, and now today is April 5th. So altogether, that's been 21 days. All 
All right, so here is our finished product. It's got a little bit of cloudiness to it, but I can see through it. Got nice bubbles coming up through it. Now the head is not terribly long lasting. I told you I began drinking, drinking this on the 31st and today is the 5th. Now from that time to this time, this beer has changed tremendously as far as flavor is concerned. When I first began drinking it, it had all kinds of esters into it. I mean, it had probably five or six different flavors that would kind of hit bang, 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 bang. But now, this beer, flavor-wise, is amazingly clean. I mean, it is stunningly clean as far as the flavor is concerned. It has just a hint of kind of a fruity ester, but I mean, that's all it is, is a hint. <clears throat> and I am beyond stunned. Folks, that is a beautiful beer. So I've got another beer that I'm gonna brew with this log very shortly. And I had been planning on using a Kvike Oslo from Bootleg Biology that is very lager-like. But I'll tell you what, I think I'm gonna use this log because I, so, I enjoy it so much. I mean, it is a tremendous beer. I am stunned from where this yeast this log started at, this is the fourth beer that I've made with it, to where it is now. And it is truly amazing. There's gonna be a lot more beers from this log in the future, trust me. Folks, do me a favor. If you like what you're seeing, down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned, there's always more to come. And stay safe with all this virus stuff going on. And thanks for watching.